So, here we are, Doctor Who is back, and it's back with something special. So, season 13 is one big story, six, six episodes, and the whole thing is called Doctor Who Flux, and I'm thinking, what the flux is this about? I know, I couldn't help myself, I couldn't help myself, I'm sorry. So, this first episode, the Halloween Apocalypse, sets itself up to sort of throw everything at you, and this feels sort of like, say... The Impossible Astronaut, you know, um, um, Doctor Who Season 6, which starts off with the 11th Doctor being shot, and that's the mystery, like, what happened, like, how does, how do we get to this point, and that's what, it, that's, again, that's what it feels like here, everything is being thrown at the wall here, the flux is this universe-ending thing that just disintegrates or destroys everything it touches, and we've got Santarans, we've got Weeping Angels, we've got stuff in the past going on about a philanthropist who wants to build secret tunnels for some weird purpose, and all of it just kind of feels very confusing, because like, wait, how is all this, like, who cares about the Santarans invading Earth when something's about to eradicate the entire universe? Like, where are our priorities? Weeping Angels attacking one person, does that really matter? Because, again, wiping out the universe. Throughout all of that, there's something involving the Timeless Child, which we're still digging that up, which Chibnall didn't have a choice. He was either going to retcon it or delve into it. And honestly, it's he can't retcon it. He can't. He can't. He has to deal with it. And whatever Russell wants to do after that, Russell will do after that. And we've got a new companion named Dan, who's who reminds me of Jamie McCrimmon for some reason. Maybe it's just the way he talks. I don't know. This story is designed to interest you, to get you excited for the season. And to be fair, it does that. Like every other first episode of Chris Chibnall's seasons. First episode, hey, Woman Who Fell to Earth, that was, that was interesting, got me excited. Spyfall, that was interesting, got me excited. And what happens at the end of those seasons? Yeah, yeah. But let's, let's sort of talk about the setup of this, because I wasn't quite sure how to do this, because I thought it was going to be a two-part episode, but if this is all one big six-part story, I can either wait for all six of those episodes to finish, or we can just leapfrog, you know, one episode to the next. So, on its own, the Halloween Apocalypse, I think, doesn't work. I think it throws too many stuff out there. It's designed to more to get you excited. Nothing exceeds, like, excess. That's what I feel watching this. And I think when we look back on it, it'll make more sense. It'll be more cohesive. But because there's so many mysteries going on here, I can't really find myself that interested. Consider the impossible astronaut. You know, an astronaut shoots the 11th Doctor, and the 11th Doctor turns out invited the 11th Doctor. So we know we have, so we know the Doctor is to some extent involved in this. Like the Doctor knew he was going to die. And then we come to like this reveal about the silence. Like all of that is very small stuff that doesn't really break anything. Here we've got way too much going on here that it, it's designed to just excite you. Because this feels like the second to last episode for the season. So after, so in any other season, um, this would be the second last episode, and then bam, the Doctor regenerates, and we got a whole new person coming in. That seems to be the flavor. But on its own, how does this episode work? Well, it introduced Dan very well. Um, Carvinista is, he's fun, he's like the, I think he's the best character in this story here. He's just endearing. He's a Luparin? A Lupari, which is essentially man's best friend is an alien because like hey we've each been assigned we each have like a person that we have to protect no matter what and the flux is coming so we have to protect them from the flux so the entire species has gotten ships together to protect only earth from this <laughs> universe ending event okay sure sure uh, then we of course we have the reveal of we have the reveal of the being known as swarm who is this super psychic criminal who's been communicating with the Doctor, and apparently she knew, uh, Swarm knew the Doctor when the Doctor was a timeless child, uh, presumably. Um, he hints that, you know, they did a good job erasing your memories. You have no idea of the dance we did, the, the dance of chaos, presumably. So, uh, yeah, in terms of setup, I think this is great. Uh, I think it'll make a lot more sense when we see the full story. Am I excited? Mm, uh, no, I'm kind of lukewarm about this. Like, everything was, like, impressive. But I just, no. This is the third time, no. This will probably be Jody's best season. Probably will. 
Will that be saying much? Yes and no. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what the flux is all about. So, yeah, this is the Buck Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your fandom serve you well.